dear investors welcome to ifl trendline exclusive analytics report we have with us today akash who has come with a very exclusive analysis on four sectors that are likely to do well this year welcome akash akash thank you thank you, you sir hi Uh, akash can you tell me um, what is your idea about india's economic recovery this financial year so i think uh, the reco- the recovery in fy21 has been very strong so uh, we looked at a few emerging markets in terms of their stock market recovery from uh, the start of fy21 to the end and if you look at the emerging markets as and the developed markets uh india has had the fastest economic economic re- recovery in terms of its at least firstly in terms of its stock market uh recovery it's about 80 83% which is significantly more than say china uh the united states uh, japan and other uh, both emerging and developed countries and heading into um FY22 the gdp recovery is also slated to be at least in double digits now the range is very uh, varied from i think 7.5 low to a high of say 13.5 but i think it's definitely within the double digit range and again this is significantly more than both emerging markets as well as uh, other markets one of the reasons for that is because uh we have a lot of uh, uh rates for uh, cuts in terms of the monetary policies and um in terms of the sectoral performance which we'll get into through the course of this uh, interview uh so you believe india will lead the emerging markets uh, economic recovery i i certainly do but uh, again like nothing is sure in the in the markets and and the economy but in terms of uh, uh, the sectoral trends i think that is certainly the case okay. and now we will come to your exclusive part uh, the four sectors you are expecting to do better this year which are the four sectors so the four sectors that we detailed in our analytics report were uh, pharmaceuticals because of the imminent pli uh, scheme that was launched last year and comes into play this year um the auto sector which also is part of the pli scheme uh, both automobile uh, mobile oem manufacturers and and auto components the infrastructure sector which will definitely see a boost with uh, the moderating prices of commodities mainly steel and uh, cement and uh, uh, we can also see uh, a boost in in the it sector but that's that's again something that we've already seen uh, but mainly i would say uh, the steel sector the automobile infrastructure sector and, and the pharmaceutical sector yes could you explain a little more about uh, the pharmaceutical sector after you are expecting and any uh, companies you would recommend considering their fundamental situation yeah so uh, now obviously the pharmaceutical sector had has had a, a significant rally in fy21 uh, one of the reasons being india was well poised to take over the market that was sort of de-risking away from china uh, one of the reasons for that is because uh, china between i think 2018 to 2020 early 2020 before the pandemic they were closing a lot of chemical factories because of an increasing uh, because of increasing pollution levels now these factories were uh, providing specialty chemicals for uh, as base chemicals for pharmaceuticals which affected india's specialty chemical sector as well you would have noticed a rally in a lot of specialty chemical companies uh, but that also has helped the pharmaceutical sector during the first half of the year uh their exports grew significantly as and and most of their exports were focused on the american and the european markets now um i think in november of la- last year the pli scheme was approved uh, for the pharmaceutical sector and uh, several companies have applied for it now in terms of the listed companies that have applied for it uh we have sun pharmaceuticals cadla healthcare lupin dr reddy's labs ipka lab uh, labs alembic but two se- two companies two listed companies that have been approved are uh, aurobindo pharma and arti drugs uh okay uh, so they might continue rally for another year right last year they also did well and this year also the likely to do well right? yeah so they corrected i think the i think the nifty pharma index has definitely corrected in the first uh, uh, the first quarter of 2021 which is from jan to march but i think uh, the the rally especially with the pli boost given which companies receive it or not um yeah, will definitely will definitely see some sort of effects there and what do you expect in infrastructure auto oems 
So uh, now uh, we, we have to come uh, put this into context of what happened at the start of FY21. Now, since there was lockdowns as well, both lockdowns as well as uh, capacity restrictions were carried on and still carry on uh, to this day, um, lots of factories were forced to operate at say below 60%, below 75% levels. I think right now also they're somewhere around there. In the first quarter of the year, they were 20% uh, operational uh, in terms of capacity. Um, but and that sort of pulled down the core sector performance: crude oil, coal, natural gas, petroleum fertilizer. Everything declined by about forty percent in in the first month, and this continued till September. So that sort of laid the footing for the first half of the year. But in the second half of the year, we saw a few uh, catalysts with respect to uh, pent up demand, with respect to festive de demand, which both came at the same time. Uh, it came in say October or November of last year, and um, and this allowed both the automobile sector and the infrastructure sector to sort of uh, revive significantly. Now, with the automobile sector, you can see at least from their wholesale sales uh, were significantly rising. Retail, not so much. Uh, as well, that it started with two wheelers and personal vehicles, sorry, passenger vehicles. And I think now slowly, as we see economic activity revive, it will go into commercial vehicles as well. Uh, with infrastructure, I think a lot of companies have increased their order book amounts. Uh, and this is not just the big companies like uh, Larson and Tubro, but also some other smaller companies, uh, KNR Construction, the Bitcoin, et cetera. And with the budget, uh, budget 2021, giving a boost for the infrastructure sector, as well as um, affordable housing demand, I think that can also lead to a, a, a significant catalyst for the infrastructure sector going forward in FY22. Any names you would like to, uh, I mean, you have seen uh, likely to do well in auto and the infrastructure sector? I think in, in terms of um, uh, the automobile sector, auto OEMs, Marty Suzuki, because it, it, it has a footing in the market, uh, it has a market leadership position. But this, I think mean, the one thing we have to note is that a lot of these companies are coming out with uh, rising uh, hikes in their prices. That's because the because of the rising input prices. So we have to see how that factors in. I, I'm not sure when that will play out, but likely by the end of the first quarter of FY22. Other than that, I think in the two-wheeler market, we have uh, Bajaj Auto and TVS Motor Company. And uh, in the commercial vehicle market, the market leader in uh, CVs, both LCVs, MCVs, and HCVs, Ashok Leyland, uh, is is definitely have uh, definitely will have a footing and also we have to uh, factor in the vehicle scrappage policy that uh, has been put into play uh, in, the, in uh, as part of the budget which will also lead to some sort of replacement demand yes okay and now let's come to the steel sector right so the steel sector was interesting because um, now it, it is an essential commodity for all sorts of industrial production uh, and at the start of FY21, we saw the prices of steel significantly uh, tank, and it slowly started increasing as economic activity ro rose. And I think it started increasing by August. It continued to rise significantly from August 2020 to Jan. Um, and in February, there was a slight moderation uh, the, because of the higher push in Jan, because uh, I think 60% of, of the entire steel demand for the world comes from China. And from mid-January to mid-February, Chinese demand was very, very low because they had their Chinese New Year celebrations. Uh, and that's where factories were shut. And the price of uh, steel, at least domestic steel, went up because, again, they were shifting away from Chinese supply. Um, this began to moderate in, in, uh, in February and as well, as well as March of this year. And now we've seen domestic steel prices after it were moderating because of uh, miners like uh, listed miners like NMDC reducing the price of iron ore. But uh, going into FY22, I, I definitely once the moderation, once the, the price moderation bar sort of flattens out, uh, we can see a lot of demand for steel products uh, from the aforementioned sectors like iron, uh, sorry, like infrastructure, like auto OEMs. A few companies that might uh, definitely sort of uh, uh, see the boost here would would, would be uh, Tata Steel, um, Jindal Steel, uh, JSW Steel, and I think uh, the, the public sector I'm taking uh, sale. Uh, thank you, Akash. Uh, we'll soon join you in another exclusive Trendline Analytics report. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you.